Hi, I'm Maria Thea Harris or VeloSoz on social media. Welcome back to Serve 50 Podcast on Soul Organized Style. You're listening to the Top 20 Countdown Series. I'm one of the main roads going into Middlesbrough and then I've been there since I was 23, I think I bought it. So I've been there ever since it's developed and there's been lots and lots of people working there and different businesses coming from there until most recently uh, I was 50 in 2018 and that year we converted the upper two floors which were student lets into the sewing school, Tees Creatives. That's Jen Leg, Tees Creatives whose podcast was published in October 2020. You'll find Jen on Instagram as Jen Leg Tees Creatives. Her episode was number 100, and today she's number 19 in the Top 20 Countdown. Many of you would know Jen, who with Charlene run So Create the Look, and in 2024, they ran So Create the Look for the fourth time. So Recreate the Look encourages us to make things we see on the high street, on Instagram, and on designer brands that feed our sewing souls. Jen with Charlene contribute to the sewing community by running this on a voluntary basis. Jen also contributes as a Fibre Mood Insider. She's also sewn for Abacan Fabrics. And Jen has also patent tested for Friday Pattern Company and many others. Jen is a great role model for sewers who are happy to be who they are and sew what makes them happy. Now, Jen also sews and lives her life with a chronic illness. So I urge you to make sure that you follow Jen. I mean, Jen shares what keeps her sewing and be creative in her podcast episode. So I encourage you to follow Jen on Instagram because it's a great way to see how you can add color and prints amongst the clothes that you sew. Jen, many thanks for being on Sober 50 Podcast. Let's go back and listen to Jen now. Today's guest kickstarted her sewing career when she watched the first Great British Sewing Bee series. It's Jen Legg and she's joined us from the northeast of the United Kingdom. Let's give a warm welcome to Jen. So as a starting point, can you tell us what your Instagram handle is and where you live? So my Instagram handle is at Jen Leg underscore Tease Creatives. The reason that the Tease Creatives is on there is that's my sewing skill, but I'm sure we'll talk about that at some point. And I did have two separate pages and just felt it was easier to combine the two. So that's the reason that that's on there. I'm from the northeast of England, which we do have strong links with Sydney Harbour Bridge because my granddad, he got to to do his dream of actually standing on Sydney Harbour Bridge when he was in his 80s because he helped build the steel in Darman's Long in Middlesbrough. So it was one of these goals to go there, which he did, and we were really proud of him doing that. And also Captain Cook is birthplace is literally 10 minutes away from here. So another link to Australia. (laughs) You've got very strong links to Australia. Never been. <laughs> Got friends there, but never been. But yeah, so that was my little claim to being near Australia. But it's a lovely place where we live. Uh, North East has quite a grim look on it, shall I say, in England mm-hmm. more than anywhere. From There's a, well, can be a Southern North divide, but it's just lovely where I live. It's just outside of Middlesbrough and where my salon is, 20 minutes away. I can walk from where I am onto fields and be in the countryside or we can get in a car and drive to the coastline. So where I was born actually in Saltburn, which is about 20 minutes away from here. So it's a great place to live. For me, it is. I really love it here. You sound like a true local. Yeah, the salon and again, we'll come on this one, going to careers, but I used to go there when I I was at school. (laughs) So the place I bought in Middlesbrough to do my hairdressing and sewing school. So yeah, I am really, although I did want to go away, but things changed and I didn't go. (laughs) So, but I do like traveling. Can you tell us your sewing journey? Basically, sewing has always been in my life. My mum was a seamstress. She never had the luxury of having her own sewing room when we were at home. So the sewing machine was always on the kitchen table, taken down for us to eat our dinner when dad got home. Me, auntie was also a sewist as well. Both of them had fabric shops sort of way back in the day. I've just inherited a lot of my auntie. Sadly, she died last year, my auntie. Mm. Um, She was a brilliant, brilliant seamstress, sort of tailoring and things like that. She was just 
immaculate a work were something to aspire to really but she had a lot a lot of stock <laughs> which is all in Tease Creatives this is a moment in time waiting for me to go through and think of what we're going to do with it I think the family want us to sell it off and donate some money to charities that she supported and then when the first series of Great British Sun B came on I just watched and thought I can actually do this so most probably didn't sew for about up until I was a teenager, I, I dabbled with things and then I most probably got into it then. So around about six years ago, I started, which coincided with an illness. I got arthritis, 120 different types, um, but my type was a reactive arthritis. So it totally, my mobility went. It took us a long time to get diagnosed with what was actually happening to me. I couldn't work as good as I needed to. So mentally, when you're creative, you need to keep going. So sewing was my therapy, really. I know it says a lot of time sewing therapy, but it really was. I was getting up and shuffling to my, I hate the word term shuffling, but it really was a shuffle I mm -hmm. couldn't walk. And getting some fabric and making something, and that was fulfilling my mind, even though my body was not moving and doing things it just progressed from there though obviously obviously illness got sorted out and I, I found my miracle drug about three years ago and I've been really lucky that since then apart from a few digits not working on my hands and feet and things and a bit of pain I've been able to get on and do things and get my life back start living again instead of just existing like I was so it was like the backbone of that time. So that, that again, so I was going to have a fondness in my heart for getting me through it all because the mm. pain was so unbelievable. Then from moving on from then though, it's just become my life now. It's just, um, I'm also probably listening to the previous podcasts of people. I can completely empathise with everyone that's saying they living and breathing it and taking photographs in mad places. And I would just go shopping. If I go shopping now, which I haven't bought any retail now, I would stay for about three years. It's just yeah. to see the construction and going in places like the high end stores to look and see how things have been made. That's been like my highlight really of, of doing things or going shopping, which I don't even enjoy doing now. Going to the high end stores to look at the finishes does give you an idea of what you can actually do and what you'd love to learn next. I think at the beginning, you just think a lot of stories at the beginning from teaching, my experience of teaching, they want perfection right at the very beginning. But my advice is to just get something sewn and get it on and get the, there's nothing better than someone saying, I love that. And you're saying, well, I made it. <laughs> so mm -hmm. just get out there, get it on. And then you can start perfecting and finishing and doing sort of things that, that you never thought you'd ever, ever achieve without being, because I've completely self-taught. Mum, like I say, was a seamstress. I've watched her and we were dressed like the Van Tropp family half the time. <laughs> my cousins, <laughs> we used to love that. My three cousins from my auntie, Auntie Dorothy, they were girls. So we used to love me and my sister when we used to get hand-me-downs to see what we were going to get from them as well. So yeah, but we went anywhere. You could tell who were sisters by the coordinating fabrics. <laughs> <laughs> so that was good. You've talked about how you've now picked up sewing. What was your original career? Well, my original career is still my career, which is hairdressing. Okay. So I left school with an O-level in art. I went to school and attended school and loved school, but unfortunately <laughs> I didn't do very well in, in the exams and things. But it hasn't hindered me from doing anything really. But I left mm. school, decided that I, did, I, I, I think I would have liked to have gone to art college, but at the time I didn't think I was good enough really. Not saying that hairdressing wasn't a good career to go into, but I just didn't really know what to do. Mm. So I had the choice of hairdressing and travel and tourism. <laughs> so obviously took the hairdressing route and it was a full-time course. At that, then in 83, I think it was, I did it. And it was a full-time course. We actually did science and loads of different things relevant. So we did wig making. Mm. We did so much things now that the industry doesn't get now in the training. So I went there full-time, but I also had a job on a weekend so I worked in a salon as well so I got the best of both worlds really there was a business studies teacher Mrs Benson and it was a name and she talked about renting a chair mm. and I suddenly thought sort of at 19 that's what I want to do I, I wanted to be self-employed my dad was self-employed so that was always in the family and um, so I left college got a job for about a year and then went self-employed and worked in numerous salons in Middlesbrough until I ended up in the salon I'm in now 
which is a three-storey Victorian property on one of the main roads going into Middlesbrough. And then I've been there since I was 23, I think I bought it. So I've been there ever since. It's developed and there's been lots and lots of people working there and different businesses coming from there until most recently. And I was 50 in 2018. And that year we converted the upper two floors, which were student lets into the sewing school, Tease Creatives. Hmm. So I've combined both passions into <laughs> under one roof, which is another dream, really. So that was good to do that. It's really great to hear your story because you get on with your life and you make the best of what you've got and you own the building and you've owned it since you were 23. Yeah, yeah. It was a bit scary at the time of buying that. The guy that I was renting from wasn't paying any bills. They came to turn the electricity off while I was actually doing someone's hair. Mm. So I was like, no way can I, I keep doing this. I need to buy it or, or do what I needed to do. It was a hard thing to do, but it was obviously paid off in the long run. Oh, yeah. And now you've got both your passions under one roof. Yeah, yeah. My husband is very handy as well. So he's... 101 percent behind everything I do so he helped totally with renovating it and like <laughs> coming out with what was in my mind to, to how it was going to come out <laughs> is electrician by trade I think there is some shots of the lights that are in T's creatives and they are a little bit wacky but perfect for sewing from because there isn't just one bulb above your head that come out from all of the ceiling and it's just Everybody who walks in that room says what a lovely feel it has. It's so lovely. Even people who aren't sewists, like my clients, have been really proud of me from doing it, although they're scared I'm going to pack in hairdressing and just sew all day. Oh, no, <laughs> you can't do that. Yeah. No, they won't let me. <laughs> There's no way. I'm lucky now that I've got such an established clientele that I'm not taking any, any more on now. So I can divide four days in the salon and then just the rest of the week I'm either sewing or teaching it or mm. doing what I can live in my life. But yeah, it's a dream really. It is really nice to have it all under one roof. And well, it, it has beds as well, <laughs> which my son did say at the time, oh no, she's never going to come home. <laughs> She'll be sleeping there. <laughs> it's another example of how you've made the best of your situation and you're creating your joy every day. Yeah, I know. And people say, well, they say you don't work a day of your life if you're doing something you love. And I do absolutely love what I'm doing. And it's took a long time. I don't employ people now. It's a different calibre when you're a manager of people. Mm. Still friendly with everybody who's been through there and, and left, but it's just so much easier just coming and going. And in a way, COVID's helped with that because... We're all doing what we can, aren't we? We don't have yeah. to have the salon door open now nine till five at night or nine till seven because no one just walks in now anyway. So the one minor positive of, of this. So, but yeah. The reason you're here is because of So Over 50. The So Over 50 ended up my, it being launched on my 50th year. <laughs> so it was really made for me, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Judith and Sandy and Suzanne might not agree. But um, I have, I've been lucky enough to meet Judith as well. Um, I haven't seen a lot of Suzanne and spoke to Sandy Lords because Sandy helped me coordinate the my sort of 50 takeover that I did a couple of weeks back. Oh, yeah. It ended up, it was such an exciting year, my 50th year, really, because my husband's 10 years older than me as well. So we had 50 and 60 years of celebrating that year, of going on a fantastic holiday to Thailand and Singapore, buying loads of material from Singapore which I was getting told off because it wasn't going to fit in the rucksack but I think I managed to squeeze 18 meters in there so I did okay well done um, then we'd all uh, this was at the beginning of the year so then we'd had the vision for Tease Creative so we we did that and launched in the September my birthday was the April but then I also got asked to be in the Love Sewing magazine as well so I made a dress for that, that I got someone to design the fabric for, which is, was really good and really exciting. And then obviously the Sew Over 50 launch. I think they did an article on it on Love Song magazine. So although I didn't go down with the girls to do the group shot, I ended up being in that because my photos were there from my dress before. So that was nice being involved with them, even though I wasn't there in person. And then it's just been, I think I was sort of like, did I know Judith before? I can't remember, but I think Judith invited me to do it. And mm. I remember like the very first things I have a bit of an obsession for jumpsuits. I'm not sure if you 
pick that one up <laughs> but I think I've made about 60 jumpsuits so far and it was that thing of do you wear the same fashion the second time round yes. so if you've done it once should you do it again but I definitely I, I think there's a photo of me when I was 18 in a jumpsuit that my mum had made out of curt material I absolutely loved I wore it everywhere I think I, I keep thinking why didn't I keep it but I think it was threadbare I don't think I could have worn it again <laughs> Then that can remember being on, on one of the first posts of being shared on Sova 50 with this jumpsuit on saying, yeah, very much so you can keep refashioning on what you do. I got the asked for um, volunteers for the Sova 50 guest editor, which I did on pattern placement. Because I think, again, with pattern and the fabric choices and the matching. So pattern placement, it was a bit confusing at the time, pattern placement of the fabric that you bought, but also pattern matching to the best pattern that can make make it happen, really, um, and make it stand out. So that was really good. But then I challenged myself, which I don't know why this came into my head the night before. I had some Escada print. It was dead stock Escada print that I got off for a great friend that again that I've met through Instagram who, who sources amazing material dibs and she I thought I'd already had the vision in my head for what I wanted to do but didn't need to do it because I didn't know when I was going to wear it or what I was going to do with it anyway I decided to do the pattern placement and it was two panels and I'd made the Park Lane dress by Nina Lee about three times again I suppose to I tend to be a bit of a serial so I always think First time you're learning, second time you're getting there and it's nearly right. But third time you're making something, you've, you've most probably got the perfection then. I don't know many people are, how you can get that perfection first time around when you're learning too. So I, I tend to do like doing things a couple of times and making and then pushing it to where I want the pattern to go to. Anyway, so I knew that this Nina Lee dress was going to, the Park Lane dress was going to work perfectly for the pattern that I had and everything. So, I just did that throughout the day. So obviously got introduced on Saw the 50. And then I was just live doing a saw along with. And the interaction was great. People were sending their pattern triumphs and then the pattern fails. I had an elephant uterus on there that I'd made for the trunks. For, and I'd made them for somebody too as well. <laughs> but she loved them, luckily. She wasn't phased by walking around with an elephant uterus on her. <laughs> but yeah, there was a lots of things came through and it was really it was a really lovely day it was met loads of nice like new people as well lots of nice messages and saying how much they enjoyed the day I I can't lie I was shattered by the end of it yeah (laughs) I maybe should have cut out and pre-recorded a few bits beforehand I think I started being very particular you know when you're recording yourself and you know, oh, I don't like the sound of that, don't like the sound of that. By the end of it, I was just like, get this out. <laughs> so like, it went a bit erratic at some points, I think. I really enjoyed doing it. So they've been really supportive. And just the work the girls do, I, I don't think people realise how much work goes into keeping us all together for, for, no, for no nothing they don't gain for anything from it do they so they're, they're great that's right. it's 24 7 they're on it every day and they do it because they love it yeah i know the handover so obviously sandy oh you guys go to bed when we're waking up she handed over to judith and judith was like i'm just checking in to see how fast sandy's got with the resharing of posts and yeah there was a lot it is in my hashtag if um on the highlights in my instagram if anyone wants to go back and look at that because that's the great thing about Instagram now. You can just be do everything, can't you? And save everything and, and have it there. And saving other people's posts is a really good way to recognise those people that you follow. Yeah, it is definitely to get the inspiration and ideas too. For people who are listening, what advice would you give them if they're not already following so over 50? I think there's, what, 21 million <laughs> followers? Is it our 21,000? Have I added a couple of nods? <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. It'll get there. Yeah. That, that's me. I just exaggerate everything. <laughs> um, but, yeah, the, I think there'll be that many following anyway. But I, I, just, I think it's just inspirational for anybody, isn't it? Any age, yeah. anywhere. Um, obviously, the Saw 50 Visible has been great movement. And I think a lot of us are being more recognised or getting chores in those groups to represent which I think is great. I do a lot for um, By Hand London. I don't know whether it is a younger set of people that normally get saw their claws. I'm not sure. Uh, Lisa Alexa 
thing. She's just sort of like getting that, that out, I think, now as well of, about mm. to be more inclusive. Sober 50 will always be inclusive. And if they are, you know, notified of something that may not be quite right, they're always on the front foot to make sure that they address any issues that people raise with them. Yeah. And as we've both said, Judith and Sandy are doing this 24-7 every day on their own bat. So it's really lovely that people like yourself, Jen, help them out with guest posts and get involved. Oh, I loved it. Absolutely loved it. The, the community on the whole, I've never come across any negativity, which I would say I was a majority. I don't mm. think there's um, a lot of people who've, who've had that negativity. But yeah, it, it's a great a great forum to be in and to, to be part of. Yeah, I do. I love it. Oh, and the whole hashtags and Sandy sorts them out, doesn't she? She does. <laughs> Yeah, and they do, uh, they do tend to sometimes when I've done things in the past, it's like, you need this hashtag because it's sometimes confusing with the S-O and the S-E-W. <laughs> for yes. the S-O. But yeah, no, it's great. It's a, it's a good thing. And, and I think it brings us all together, a nice, buzzy, yeah. vibrant community to be involved with. Everyone is able to shine. Judith has got her spreadsheet of people they're always looking for new people so that they can recognise them. And it, if anybody's out there who fancies a go and thinks, oh, I'm not quite sure, the support I've got was unbelievable from Sandy to prior to doing it, just mm-hmm. discussing the ideas that I was talking about and to think. And obviously there was no expectation to I get loads of likes. I know you guys don't have likes now, do you, in Australia? The numbers. Yeah, the numbers. But that was never, like, she said, don't don't worry about that you might not get any engagement don't worry about that just you you just be you and do it which was a great tip to start off with so that's why I just went for it for it although at the end of it she did say she was exhausted <laughs> <laughs> trying to keep up with me and and doing things but yeah it was really good I really enjoyed it I felt like I was on the tv for the day <laughs> You put the effort in and I'm sure that everyone really appreciated what you did. So thank you again. Yeah. If you're going to do something, you have to do it 100%, don't you? Well, Jen, thanks again for giving us your time on So Organised Styles So Over 50 podcast today. Oh, thank you. I'm really flattered that you asked me to do this. This episode of So Over 50 podcast on So Organised Style was produced by me, Maria Thea Harris, with permission of Jen Legg. Tees Creatives. Sound by bensound.com. Many thanks for the ongoing support of the podcast Patreon contributors. On patreon.com forward slash so organized style, you can support this podcast every month for the cost of a coffee. Their ongoing support enables me to develop this podcast for free. You can subscribe to So Organized Style Podcast, but with an S not a Z on all good podcast apps. Make sure you go back and listen to our free Sub 50 podcast archive on Soul the Nice Style Podcast. If you would like to contribute to the many ongoing posts and challenges the team promotes on the Sober 50 account on Instagram, direct message Sandy and the editorial team. The Sober 50 community has over 50,000 followers. We look forward to joining you in your sewing room next time. Stay safe, everyone. <laughs>